I now understand why people were asking me, how did I mount these sprockets from the, from the snowblower, from the track drive snowblower, onto these wheelchair motors? I said, well, it was easy. I just put the sprocket on there and set the set screw. Well, they changed the design to a through hole and there's no set screw, no keyways in these anymore. So there's no keyway on this anymore. And you know, there's, it's not heavy enough. I don't know if somebody would want to try to broach a keyway in there. Anyway, I'm not going to mess with that here. And, and, and what I'm also not going to do is I'm not going to drill a hole through this shaft. This shaft is hardened and it's brittle. I found that out when I when I was removing these uh, using the uh, using using the puller on this. I busted off one of these, and it's I mean this is a good hardened shaft. It's not going to bend, but that makes them a little brittle. And quarter inch, you know, quarter inch is a lot of metal to be removing from a three quarter shaft and uh, I'm just afraid it's going to get a little too weak and too brittle and I don't know how machinable this is going to be. I don't know how hard it's going to be to get a quarter inch drill bit through there. How am I going to get this in a drill press? If you want to try to do that, you go right ahead. Here's what I'm going to do. Because I also want to get the sprocket out about here past the end of the shaft, I am going to use um, these, these weld on, so this is the same size sprocket as what was on the snowblower, but they're two pieces, you weld them together, and I bought extra hubs, and uh, this one I'm going to grind apart, but just for illustration, you take two hubs, you weld them together and you get, you know, a nice beefy shaft adapter and you can then move the sprocket out wherever you need it to be without worrying about being right on the end of that drive shaft. Okay, so next issue, these track drive units this gauge of chain looks like number 40 and I thought it was just by looking at it and I was wrong. Stamped on it, it says 420. This is 420 chain. This is a number 41 sprocket. And so when I went out and bought an 18 tooth number 40 sprocket, this is 18 tooth number 40, Okay, it's the perfect size. It matches the number of teeth. It matches the pitch. Life, you think life is dandy, right? Well, the difference between a number 41 and a number 40 is the width of the sprocket. The number 40 is wider, significantly wider than the number 40, 41 sprocket. Okay, so what happens then? You can't use the 420 chain on a number 40 sprocket. It just doesn't seat down in there because this sprocket is too wide. So this chain is out, this sprocket is out. We're gonna keep the same sprocket, number 41, in the drive wheel. But we're gonna use number 40 chain with a number 40 sprocket and this chain is wider than the number 41 sprocket, and so it'll have a little bit of side-to-side -side slop. Um, oh, it's, uh, what, maybe two millimeters? So, you know, there's some slop there, um, but low RPM, it's, it's not a mini bike, it's not a go-kart. It's not going to be just driving it, you know, high RPMs. It's going to be low RPMs. I don't anticipate any problems. If there are problems, I, well, then I'll have to figure out something else. But um, you can go on the internet and 
and you can find uh, number 41 uh, weld on sprockets. I was cheaper just going to Mills Fleet Farm and buying the Speco, S P E E C O brand uh, hubs and sprockets that you weld together. And that's what I, I've decided to do. And you can stay tuned and we'll, we'll see how well it does, how well it performs. If it's, if it's messy and sloppy, I'll let you know. If it works fine, I'll let you know. I'm not going to hide anything.